Bridge Nation, good morning. Good day. It's two minutes after the after high noon in Kingston, Jamaica, as we welcome you on the bridge that unites Jamaicans all over the world with the rock, with the people here. The heart that extends to all people of our blood and of our soul anywhere in the world. The program is the public eye. <laughs> the program has a pedigree of over 50 years. We're reinventing it and extended now, extending it now on the bridge. I'm Ronnie Thwaites, and with me is the Honorable Pernell Charles Sr. Good day, sir. Good day, Ronnie. <laughs> Good day. Good day. Good Happy day. to have you. Happy to be with you. Yes. We have an interesting program today. We have the man who has been noted for the formation of the, one of the, uh, the, the supermarkets and stores uh, in Jamaica, Sam's Caribbean Marketplace, yes, Andrew Morris. He's going to tell us, and I'm sure this will interest the father of the Minister of Agriculture in Jamaica, about the, the availability and the marketability of Jamaican produce all over the world, and particularly in the tri-state era, on the global connection with Irwin Clare. Sorry. And after that, hey, hey, careful. And after that, uh, Bo Bobby Stevens, well-known co management consultant and public uh, servant nationalist, uh, tells us his dream for Jamaica, yeah. 2030. That would be great, wouldn't it? So look forward to the public ad today. You're welcome to call us. The numbers are 876-551-5782. That's a WhatsApp and text line. And the studio line is 876-676-4996. This is a bridge. The bridge, the only station of its kind, reaching Jamaicans everywhere. Well, Mr. Charles, what, what news would we want to give to our, uh, our listeners abroad over the past week? Well, I think hmm. that the, the most publicized <laughs> yeah. one has been the, um, put it as they have been saying, the breaking down of some houses that were built and, and lands that belong to, to government. To, to government. Uh, how can you do that? Uh, I, 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 maybe it's for me the law is the, the, the law is a shackle, you know, and um, if 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 there's a court process that everybody else has to go through, no, to, no, 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 to repossess land, sure. So so a man can come and build a my land. No, if you can, you can put him off. But if he has built a structure, if he's uh, building a structure on my land, uh -huh. like like they wanted to do the other day. Uh huh. I no, no. You can protect your land and say, th and and, and uh, you you can remove a person for trespass on your land. And and and, and what what about the building that he's been constructing? No, if if you if 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 he if he claims any kind of tenancy, then there's a legal process. But the, no, the only claim he has is that he want a piece of land and him take peace. No, that's different. But then uh, it, okay, or that somebody has stole him. Mm -hmm. That if can sell him, uh, somebody sell him a piece of land, uh, a my land. Mm -hmm. Can he prove? Uh, all he has is him saying, pay the man and the man give him a receipt, but mm -hmm. you can't make out the name. Oh, is that what happened out there? Well, as far as I heard, oh. is that the people said that there was a man selling land, uh -huh. they bought, mm -hmm. and they have a receipt. Yes. So, so And the Prime Minister is saying, find the man mm -hmm. or tell us who mm -hmm. he is so we can find him. And in the meanwhile? Because and in the meanwhile, sir, eh? and in the meanwhile, well, in the meanwhile, uh, stop. Okay, stop. agreed, agreed, and yes, uh, agreed, uh, totally agreed. And let me tell you something, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. I, I think you expect me to say this because of my admiration for Andrew Onis. Two minutes to I, I don't know that any other prime minister uh -huh. would have got up out their bed at five o'clock uh -huh. and reach out there at something to six. Uh -huh. To talk to the people. Uh -huh. after, after breaking down their house? After, yes. Oh? Breaking down some of the houses. Yeah. So where, oh. I mean, that, that's, this, this broke up and hug up syndrome, is that, is yeah. that the yeah, way to Ronnie, do it? Ronnie, I, I understand the break up and hug up syndrome <laughs> no, that you're talking about. Yeah, man. That's, I am saying. That's contradiction. Well, the point is this. Uh -huh. That if it was on my land, uh -huh. I'd, I, would, I wouldn't meet them. Uh -huh. I would break up and push it off of the land. Uh -huh. But you are saying that on land that the government has responsibility for mm -hmm. 
He shouldn't do anything about it. Here's a man who, here's a gentleman who previously, um, I, I can sh show you video footage, has said, look, I, I am not into this at all. I respect people's right to live somewhere. I'm not into this. Um, I'm hearing everything, please, uh, over in your corner. Um, excuse me. And I'm not going to do this. And then he says, look, um, your uh, people there are criminals or in con I'm so sorry, I'm hearing everything in the studio. Can you, it's disturbing my conversation. Um, and I'm going to, to, to do this. And then the next day, as you say, waking very early, to his credit, he's out there saying, look, I really, I really don't like to do this, you know. Whoops. Yes, but well, you, No, all I'm saying is, I'm not, I'm not going to personalize this any more than is obvious. Yeah. Um, but we need a policy, don't we? We have a policy. Yeah, it, those buildings. We have a policy. Those buildings didn't go up there in one day. Ronnie, can you put up a building mm -hmm. without getting permission from the parish council? Of course, most people do. No, they don't have any permission. No, from no, the parish but, council. The, but, but that's 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 it, they shouldn't. But that's the norm. The fact is that regarding that's the law, not the norm. No, but the no. Can you bring Irwin into this? No, I, no. I'm so sorry. I, it's 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 so difficult. Um, we will shortly. Um, the the it the, the norm is that the law is breached. The law is breached. There and is so, so therefore, there's a, the there's, a, there's, a, there's a way to satisfy the breach. Yeah, there, there is, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. There's what? another thing that is the reason why you instructed him to stop and proceed that way. Mm -mm. What, I, what I want is a policy that is going to prevent that kind of situation taking place, which, because not, not, I have no brief or no special sympathy for the people in that area, what I do know is that there are almost a million people we are living All in that kind of situation. And it should never be that way. It need not be that way. And uh, that is at the root of some of the real social disorder that we have. And Ronnie, I'm glad to hear you say that. But you know what bothers me? Mm -hmm. When a Mr. X comes mm -hmm. around and he's a smarty mm -hmm. and he sells land mm -hmm. to people mm -hmm. and he doesn't have any land, mm -hmm. he has no authority to do so, yep. he collects the money and he disappears. Mm -hmm. Right? So... And then you discover that he sells land to some of his cronies. Yes, and who? Okay, I believe that if you that if you take charge of your assets, yes, you you can avoid most of that. One and two, you should avoid both should of them. Av avoid most of that. And two, I have to say that government is not in control of its of its lands. Just not. Yeah, but we, who we is government? Who is government? The ministries, agencies, and departments of okay, the state. Okay, okay. Yes. And we bring in our friend Erwin Clare for the Global Connection at Irish Jam in New York. Erwin, good day. Good day, gentlemen. Uh, notably, Reverend Ronnie Twaits <laughs> and the senior man himself, in Mr. Senior. Colonel Charles. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure you heard, you, you heard what you were saying, right? Yes, yeah, we've been listening, yes. Yes. And, and how, how is New York? Well, well, first and foremost, let me say good day to the listeners uh, on the global link here, especially those in Jamaica and those of us here in the tri-state area. Um, well, by now you'd have heard that, that DACA, which is a deferred action for early arrivees of young people to this nation in an undocumented way, um, that DACA, which was a, a system set up by former President Obama back in 2012 to allow for folks, youngsters who came into the country without status to get a work authorization and remain here to live legally. Uh, that has been tied up in the courts and it has been thrown back, it has been thrown out again, meaning that they are not accepting new applications and have turned it now over to Congress, which we've always been saying Congress has to make a decision on this. Some 800,000 persons could be affected. So that's something that has been a jolt to the immigration world, not unexpected. No, wait, um, wait a minute, let me understand. Yes. It. What I thought I heard was that the policy was prepared to accept those who were already re oh yes, within re the system. registered as, da as DACA. Yeah, in the system. How on earth can any country continue a situation where people have this, r this as, as a dribbling stream going on forever and ever? That can't work. Well, well, well th th it's not necessarily a dribbling stream. There are others who could have qualified. So why didn't and they? Th because of um, certain timelines which were not met. With that being said, it was also being challenged to, to withdraw from the 800,000 persons who had these benefits. That has been put on hold. 
Congress has to put in a real fix on this because by now many of these persons are well endowed in the system and contributing to the economic fabric of this nation. No, but if, uh, so it's um, back to I'm Congress sorry, to make that correction. Okay, I wish you could understand fully though. Go ahead. If people found themselves in this situation where they were mm -hmm. brought to the United States as minors, Yes. And they have grown and know, know no other country. They are deserving of process which would put them on a path to citizenship. I thought that there was an, a, a, a long last after many fits and starts that that was... No. Okay. How did it get in the United States? Yeah, I missed that point. No, well, well, we have to go. That's a variety that's a of different ways. Very, very reason. But what but had there has to be some. There has to be some ex end point, doesn't there, Erwin? True. The end point resides in Congress. You see, what had happened was that some twenty odd district attorneys filed a lawsuit against it, and 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 the court upheld their decision as it relates to blocking new applicants. What they were seeking to do was to reverse it. That was not done because it's still in abeyance right now where it is now thrown back to Congress. Congress has to address it. And, and, and in a sense, Ronnie, it, it's, it's probably a blessing and a curse at the same time because it now forces, we hope, Congress to make a decision in the short term, which is, it, which is the hope. You know, Erwin, this to me, answer one question for me. Where do all of these people come from and how did they get into the United States. I'll be quick with that answer. They come from all over the world. Yes. A lot, quite a few from Jamaica too. Yes. How did and they these, get are, these are children who were brought into the United States by no decision of their own. Right? No, no, and no, no. How no, were no. they brought they, into they the United States? Over the border. They, <laughs> over the border. They came in okay. with their, or, or they came in without documentations which weren't theirs. Okay. You but know? you answer the question. They mm -hmm. were undocumented then. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. they're undocumented, yeah. yeah. So what are the prospects of Congress making this determination? <laughs> well, when you consider how toxic Congress is these days, I, I don't see that decision in this term. Possibly in the next, uh, after, the, uh, after the elections, it's possible. But um, again, I don't think any, any, any one entity would want to have that as a stain because if they're going to say they're against DACA and it has to be reversed, then you're looking at deporting 800,000 persons. Which, the, which, which is inhuman, one. Exactly. And two, it, the economy can't stand that. <laughs> True. Because these are there people who are l largely working, tax-paying people. Yes. Um, otherwise, from their documentation, fully integrated in, in American Into the life. System. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and the interesting part is that there is support on both sides of the aisle, but not sufficient. Uh -huh. You know, so it's not just a democratic so, thing. So what is, is support. The, what is the opposition saying? Well, there well, are those who are just hell-bent on persons who are non-United States. I don't know their defini definition, but are there any white against immigrants. Are there any white people among the Dakas? There would be, but most of it would be from Latin and South America. You know, Ronnie, this, if you sit down and you're a writer, mm -hmm. and write a story on what happened in Jamaica the other day with these people, and that it's very close, you know, which and, people? and those people, which people are those? The, the people, the houses owed that are middle. You mean teams. doing something illegal and then seeking to get some <laughs> rem remedy for it? Yeah, yes, the uh -huh. to get in the United States without permission is illegal. Yeah. Whether mm. you come from Mexico or you carry on their sheet. But, but, but the, question, sure. the, the question of personal responsibility mm -hmm. is, is critical. Mm -hmm. In the case of, uh, of a squatter, to continue your analogy, Pernell, um, I make a decision. But if, if I'm a child and I'm taking yeah. over the border with my, my parent, parents, yeah. my goodness. Do yeah. they all children? Which, which, which by are the they way, all children? No, they're all, at, on, on, at that all time. underage at the yeah. time. Yeah. But, yeah. but running, even some of those children mm -hmm. are lost. We have lost one. Oh, my but, God. But, but the but woman, the woman yeah. is coming from Mexico. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. What so you know, that's what you know of, Pernod, because, because, because there are many more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, right? but, he, but, you know, wh wh what's the solution? Who has it? What's the policy that's being put forward that is uh, conservative, humane, just in respect of immigration? I can't figure that out. What you said just now is that we're, we're um, providing a policy, a pathway for these persons to become citizens. Yeah. Or, uh, and, and that is basically it. And when you consider what they would have done, part of it would be that you're at engaged in your education, you're employed, and you're subscribing to your civic duties, meaning you're paying your taxes right. and you're, you're not committing any crimes. Those are some of the fundamental criteria. And most of these folks have done that because they are integrated into the system because if they had any criminal records running and perno, they yeah. would not be able to get a work authorization. Yeah. <laughs> you see? So so they are largely 
following the rules and the regulations that relates to what it needs to, to get to that point. No, indeed. Just that on item one, they are not qualified. Uh -huh. Item one, they are not qualified to have been in the United States without a visa or the authority to have been taken there or gone there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. like these people were not authorized to go on land. Mm -hmm. They so what will be the result? They don't have, they don't have what, permission from the... And what's the result, though? What, what is the respon what's the responsibility of the authorities the in this okay. situation? Okay, the responsibility Rani has just given me. Leadership, the Prime Minister has to now look at how some of these people who dine to get a house, somebody come to sell them the land, they're glad to buy it, they don't even go to permission, parish comes for permission, they build a house. Genuine people want to live in a house. This mm. is where you, as Mr. Tweet and Reverend mm. Tweet and Honorable <laughs> Tweet, right? Yeah, yeah, we're here. Right? <laughs> yeah. So now talk to your prime minister. And the prime minister recognized that. Prime minister said, stop breaking down the house. Come and let us discuss it. And I congratulate him for that. No, I, well, I congratulate the, 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 the final for state. The after, for the, after, the afterthought. After, yeah. But the original thought was, was barbaric. Um, the, the, the point of the matter is, though, I, want, I need to say this clearly. I practice this kind of law. I'm a squatter lawyer, okay? You're a squatter lawyer? Yes, yes. I help people to, who, are, who are in such circumstances where they reside on land which they do not own, not to thief it, not to get it for free, but to get it on reasonable legal terms. So and how, I how a squatter get it on I, reasonable I, terms? Of course, uh, arrangements but all over. The, 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 there are a number of efforts that have been made from Norman Manley's days in the land settlements to, to, to create a legal basis, just as Erwin is talking about creating a legal basis yes, for yes. these undocumented immigrants. Yes. There, is a, 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 there are many legal bases by which people yes. who enter onto land can be regularized or in some cases removed. The Honorable Daryl Vaz and myself you know, in the last um, session of parliament that you presided over worked on law and, and passed law that created the basis for this uh, or a further basis for this. Yes. So th th that is what must be done. What you cannot do is what to... What you should not do. What, well, you can always <laughs> use brute force, you know. Yes. Yeah, but it doesn't work because what you do is you, you, end, you end up with a chaotic society and you preside over it and think you're a king, but in fact you're, you're Beelzebub. Yes, so you're killing us. <laughs> but you know, you, know, you know, gentlemen, this subject is very interesting and of great importance, <laughs> yes. you can imagine, to many yes. Jamaicans out of I, Jamaica. I have one piece of advice to give to your listenership, yes. your constituency, Mr. Clare. Yes. Yes? If you have land in Jamaica and you're living abroad, don't lift it up so. Don't mm. lift it careless put somebody reasonably in charge or come look for it every once in a while because given land hunger given give, given criminality given greed yes all of those mo motives or, or separately or jointly you are likely to lose the benefit that you have all right Claire, I, and, I, and that is good that is I, good news. I, I was on to say that ronnie has said that on my behalf <laughs> Quoting the Prime Minister, <laughs> yeah. and I congratulate. <laughs> I have you know, nothing further to say. I, I'll go further, you know, and I, and I think one of these programs we should dedicate some discussions on that, Ronnie and Perna, because mm. it, 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 is, it is cause for angst amongst many. Of because course. Because just imagine what you just said, just now, for those many, uh, for, for many who may not have, just to say that they're paying their land taxes and everything mm -mm. is all right. No, no, no. They, no, no. They, we they, need to have more dialogue on that. Okay. Because uh, it they pay no taxes and somebody... No, some no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying, Mr. Charles. This is what I'm saying. There are persons in the diaspora here who oh, yes, probably yes. comfort themselves yeah. the fact that, the fact that they pay the their taxes, taxes no. and oh, okay. taxes are paid yeah. on the land, yeah. that all is well. Yeah. But that is not necessarily so. And, yeah. and what you've just added there is of significant importance. And I think this is a subject here that needs... And to I think, I think this is something that between Arijam and the bridge, we should certainly schedule. This is a good way to increase the information that is available to people. Huh? Indeed. We indeed. have a guest. Yes, and I think we have a don't we? I think we're we going to take break. a break, and then yes. we're coming back, and you'll introduce our guest, and we'll do well. Okay. Good. And do we have our guest on the I line? Th I think he, we probably need a, a minute or a minute okay, and a half. You'll tell to us get when. There. Yes. yes, good. So b I'm, I'm reiterating the advice. Look here, if you have family land, if you have 
piece of land where you say you own, make or mm -hmm. make sure that you you set it right. There are some lawyers who can help you. Um, there, there, there are no doubt services that the consulates may offer in mm -hmm. this regard to guide you, but do not let it go. Yes, I'm amazed. Yes. There is, there, there is, a, there is a, a professional of high order um, mm -hmm. in who lives abroad. A man who you who is wealthy, who you would expect uh, to to know things, mm -hmm. and when you see the house that he has built on land that he does not own, <laughs> in Jamaica. Well, I I I I I add one to this, Ronnie. I know a poor lady in London uh -huh. who worked all her life yes. and send the money to one of her relatives yes. Yes. to buy a piece of land yes. for her yes. and build a house. Yes. He bought the land in his name. Yes. He built the house in his name. Uh, let me and when the lady come, uh -huh. pure tears. She has to go back to London. Listen to me. Mm -hmm. I had a case, Erwin Purnell, when I was Minister of Education. There was a piece I identified near to the College of Agriculture in Portland. Yes. And when we looked, there was this remarkably well built house and this retired person from England in it. Yes, and he was quite certain he had paid for the land. He yeah. could identify the relative, yeah. etc. And he had built the house. And he was there to enjoy his, his re retirement days. Yes? The land had never been sold mm. by, by the government. And there was an appeal made by a person who I admire, Mr. Latouche, who often yes. uh, advocates on behalf of returning residents. And we had to make arrangements with the help of government so that that land could, in fact, be uh, be titled for the, the, the man who found himself in this position. But w w we need the people living abroad who want, who love the country, who, who want to settle here for all, all the good reasons. The very purpose that we, we all come on the bridge or in Irish Jam must be careful and they must get the proper help. Indeed. You know, you know, and I, you need I, to I say to the government, yeah. you must have representative in your embassies abroad. Who can help. So yes, who can, can help guide. these people yeah. sure. and make Correct, a connection sir. here Thank in you. Jamaica. Thank you. That they can call Mr. Tweet and say, I have a piece of land in Portland. Mm. I'm in Bilton. Mm. Could you get a check out for me if I have Something. to pay your transport cost? And but, but the, the, the ministry must have that. that, that you, but you, know, you know, gentlemen, um, I, I'm reminded of a situation and this is probably just on the jovial side, but it's, it's serious connotations. Um, uh, a woman who showed off her fantastic, beautiful house in Jamaica, and she was saying to folks that she requested to be in a quiet area, with, you know, very quiet and no, not many people around her and all that kind of stuff. And we looked at the house, a very beautiful house, and <laughs> she had not, not, not gone home to see it. And when she went home to see it, she now found out why it was so quiet around that area because her her family member instead of spending the money to buy the land that she expected them to buy it was placed right in front of a nice beautiful cemetery so we <laughs> always said to folks you know <laughs> be cognizant of oh yours no. of no, where you request your land and <laughs> yeah yeah it was very quiet indeed no, but you but know and these are serious issues they are serious issues and it, it it goes to the the very texture of the relationship between those in the diaspora and us at home and i insist the, uh, um, this is the statement I was going to make. The system of registered t getting title and own proving ownership and maintaining ownership in Jamaica was never intended for people who look more like Pernell and Irwin than me. Yes? It is a complex system. It is an expe unnecessarily expensive system. Yes? And uh, as a consequence, generations of people have dealt with land as if you were cu cutting up a, a loaf of bread. Yes, yes. Yes? You get a slice here. Yeah, mm -hmm. and th this and is your piece. And everybody is selling mm -hmm. a piece. Well, this is yeah. it. And this yeah. is your piece, and sometimes it runs through the bathroom or the, yeah. the and, living and room. And sometimes <laughs> you build where the road. Absolutely. Like yeah. this on yeah. understand mm -hmm. where the, where the road is to be to in go. the development. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. where one of the horses mm -hmm. no. So there are, if we want to settle, if we have, have social peace in this country, if we want an ownership um, society, then we have to look very carefully, not only right. at the law, but mm -hmm. also at the practice regarding this. And because right now it is rife with the, mm -hmm. with, with the Kuniman, the Jinal, who <laughs> can come and say, listen, man, I, I can't sell your piece here, you know. Especially, last, when, he, especially last, when he uses force. The last thing I want well, to say on this, Ronnie, mm -hmm. is to say to the Prime Minister and mm -hmm. his team, mm -hmm. strengthen mm -hmm. your governmental agency. Sure. 
that uh. cover this so that we don't have mm -hmm. Ginals going to sell people land mm -hmm. and cut out mm -hmm. guns and, 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 and also and also if them afraid they must speak up to yep. them bosses. Do, do we have because another minute? Yes, we are we ready? Because if we do, let yes, us remember ahead. that we have far too much what we call crown land in Jamaica. Yes. Mm -hmm. Government have too much land. Yes. Government must sell the land to people. Yes, that was what 1865 rebellion was all about, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Paul Bogle and others asked for land in order to cultivate after emancipation. And the Queen wrote back to them, Queen Victoria, and said, no, what you must do is to work hard. F yes, and by your industry you will prosper. It is the same thing we are saying to people now. Exactly. You're, you're, a, squatter, right. you're a squatter lawyer. Yes, sir. Tell me something. <laughs> Pro proudly, no, I, no, I want to get... Uh, there's, a uh, caveat. there's a caveat. There's a caveat in uh, that statement. I so. want that, no, no. He represents people <laughs> okay. who are squatters <laughs> okay. as an attorney. Mm -hmm. and let me yeah. ask you, Ronnie, very seriously. Mm -hmm. Where do all of these titles that government is giving out come from and why why were they with them? Thousands of titles. Th thousands of titles. Where those, those are crown lands? Crown lands. Right. Well, gentlemen. So we have a guest. Yes, we do. <laughs> I, I, but he's, you realize the importance of this I subject. I do, and we'll have uh, to right. come back to it. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, so we'll quickly go to our guest. And, you know, this guy just has a long intro. But I share this with you. Many people don't know him by the name we're going to <laughs> introduce him by because we know him as Sam's, <laughs> right? Well, this gentleman, Andrew Morris, is the chief executive officer of Sam's Caribbean Marketplace, an entity on Long Island today that whenever you want anything from Jamaica or the Caribbean and you want to feel nostalgic, you go to Sam's Caribbean Marketplace. He, he, he presently is the chairman of Brata, Brata, which is a, a production company that reminds us and keeps us attuned to our culture. He's involved in many community-oriented stuff, gentlemen. Whenever we want something, uh, we want something nice and a contribution. Sam's Caribbean Marketplace is the place to go to. If you want a Dutch too, you can go there as well. I think we have him online right now. He's going to share with us how, how he gets the Jamaican products, Jama Caribbean products, and keep the diaspora attuned to what's going on. Mr. Andrew Morris. Hi, sir. Good afternoon, uh, afternoon. gentlemen. Welcome Good. home. <laughs> thank you, thank you, <laughs> good. thank you, Reverend. We're, we're, we're happy good to have <laughs> Charles. Yes, and Mr. Clear. Yes, man, and Mr. Clear. We're happy to yes, sir. to do the big link with you. Tell us, your, tell us your story. How you come to be where you are? Where you come from in Jamaica? Well, I'm from a little town called Linstead. I was <laughs> born right near the market. <laughs> really? And <laughs> are you in a single boat? I'm still carrying it too. <laughs> <laughs> a a <laughs> yes, man, yes. To get out of my gate, I had to ask the, the Iglas to excuse me because I had to walk over the, 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 uh, the bananas of my gate. And, and, and I have been in Prince Parish, uh, Reverend Twitch, yes. and um, the Virtual McPherson and Aluna Sambo. Really? We were all part of the CYM back in the days. Lovely. Yes. Good yes. 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 Good, good, good connections. <laughs> Bishop yes, Virgil yes. McPherson is a Catholic Bishop of Montego Bay, yes, and yes. We, we all know Aluna Samba, the former High Commissioner in, in England. Yes, yes, good. yes. I so, was back in England last week. Yes. So, so Andrew Morris, yes. you, 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 you moved to the States, and what led you into this particular very sensitive, exquisite line of work? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, a friend of mine who I hired um, in the early days, she told another friend that she works at a retail store and the friend said, you know, that's why I send my kids to school so they won't have to be shopkeepers. Oh. And, um, you know, that's uh, just it's a mindset. It's, really? it's, uh, yes. it's a mindset that we have to overcome. Uh -huh. Yes, but anyway, um, I started working at a company, a newspaper publisher in Long Island. I lived in the Bronx then, because that's where I came when I just got here. And um, then I decided I was going to move to Long Island because the tr you know the the, commu the commuting was just too much for me. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Long Island. It's called Hempstead. And when I got here, uh, this uh, Jamaican family started uh, erecting a store, a restaurant here called Nakisaki Jamaican Chinese Restaurant. Nakisaki Jamaican. Um, I Wait, thought... No, we're different, you know. <laughs> what, yes. what, 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 a, what a mix-up business that yeah, is. Man, a big <laughs> fixture in our community, too. A big, big restaurant fixture in our community. All back right, in so, days, yes. Good. And so what happened? Yes. 
So um, they started up and looked like business was just flourishing for them. And I thought, you know, um, it would be nice for us to have a, a store, a retail store that sells the products. Um, Naki would sell the cooked food and the store would sell all the ingredients for the food. And I thought it'd be nice to have a store right next to them because prior to that, there were really no Caribbean operated stores in this area. Mm -hmm. If there were any stores that products, it would be from, you know, other ethnic groups that would do it. And um, I thought, wow, it'd be nice. But before that, I never actually ran a sale in my life. I lived next to a shop, but I never owned a shop. My parents never owned a shop. I never worked into a shop. And so I spent two years um, planning and figuring out where we're going to be, where the money is going to come from, and all the legwork. And then in 1993, at the age of 32, we opened. 33, actually. We opened the store, my family and I. Whoa. But, but then who, 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 what, is the, what is the interest, what is the market for, for Caribbean produce? How do you satisfy what are distinctive tastes between various parts of the Caribbean? How wide is your, 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 your banker basket, sir? <laughs> and, with, and, and particularly, I'm, I'm, I'm putting all my questions so that I can shut up, but for the, for the father of the Minister of Agriculture in Jamaica, he wants, to, he wants to be sure that you can get all the produce that you need on a regular basis and at reasonable prices. Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, our banker basket is pretty wide because if you notice, we didn't say Jamaican marketplace. Yes. It's a Caribbean uh -huh. market. And, and so we try to reach out to the various islands. We have products from St. Lucia, St. Vincent, from Barbados, from Trinidad, from Guyana, but predominantly Jamaican um, since that's the market that we're most familiar with. And, and considering I'm from Linstead Market, you know, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, we're more than just produce. We, I mean, produce is a part of what we do, but it's actually packaged goods. And then also we have a restaurant inside the, the, the establishment. So, so it's it's a wide. We try to we try to be all things for the Caribbean community. You know, we we give them the produce, we give them the uh, the, the the Milo and the Horlicks and the um, the. Pick the sauce and the grease um, products yes, and sure. the new pack and the Nicely. heat and all, all, all the various brands. Uh -huh. But we also um, we also have a, a restaurant that does things. So we, we do we do money transfer. We do we do quite a few things. So it's it's all encompassing. Mm -hmm. You could come to the store, pay your bills. You know, in Jamaica, right. you could send money to your. Account. It's just a, a one stop shop for all sorts of stuff. And so you know, we we just have to keep. Um, reinventing ourselves because there were days when we used to rent dvds uh, well actually we used to rent um vhs videos and we used to sell cds all that's gone now yeah. so you know we we do we do a little bit of everything as far as the caribbean is concerned with, with the emphasis on jamaica of course but tell me something how did you get the chinese involved in the name <laughs> do you have a Chinese um, Connect, connection? <laughs> you look like he has overtaken the Chinese and the Japanese for, by his well, own. Are you, are you serving them? Do you serve something that 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 they they they, they buy? They buy. Yes. No, that name came from the restaurant that was next door to us before when we when we were at another location. Uh -huh. The name oh. Nak is Jamaican Chinese restaurant. Uh -huh. That was that was our inspiration. They're the ones who inspired us to uh -huh. do what we did. I to see. actually start the okay. We're actually Peruvian marketplace, so mm -hmm. there is no Chinese uh, <laughs> name in there. Again. And you always tell that, us what, what kind of what what kind of of future do you see? Is is we we, we know that our, our manufactured products or food based products are have to become more and more prominent as a source of earnings for the Jamaican agricultural sector, the manufacturing yeah. sector. Um, we can't just depend on remittances and tourism and business processing. Um, w w is it, what can we do better so that you can do better and for our, our people can be more satisfied and served, Andrew Morris? It's, it's a huge market here, and I don't think we're actually scratching the surface yet. Uh, people in general, not just Jamaicans or Caribbean people, people love Jamaican products. They love Jamaican music. They love Jamaican people. And one of the things that we have problems with is consistency in terms of supply. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and also, I mean, take mangoes, for example. And I understand mangoes are seasonal. But this year, um, 
we last year we had a, a pretty good season, okay, of getting mangoes from Jamaica. This year we got three shipments. All right, one one time we got about um, seventy boxes. Next time we got like thirty five, and I mean we were ordering like two hundred boxes, and and they just couldn't um, fulfill the need. We got three deliveries, and that was it. It was finished, done, uh, no more. Uh, we probably could have sold several thousand cases of mangoes. We ended up Mercy. selling a few hundred. But you know, you know, hold on, sir, because yeah. because apparently, Charles, you come from St. Thomas more recently. Look how much m we have mango for stone dog this season, you know. Well, but, but yes. even let me let me let me hurry to tell you uh -huh. the largest transfer of mangoes, yes, sir, from Jamaica uh -huh. has been from St. Thomas. I'm, I'm sure. Time. But but then but, look but, at look but, at what but, Andrew Morris but, needs. Ronnie, you're talking about a few farmers in Jamaica. Yeah. yeah. To millions of people. Yeah. Yeah, but but yeah, you know, the yeah. amount of people in New York mm -hmm. who want Jamaica mango. That is what yeah. Mr. Morris <laughs> is telling us. But, but Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Yeah. For for yes, for, for for the farmer or the person involved in farming listening right now or products there in Jamaica. Share with them what are some low hanging fruits that they could satisfy mm -hmm. your marketplace with right now opportunities for them we know uh, the mango city but what, what are some other niche city because we have to understand we're like a boutique market so let's not kid ourselves we're gonna have all this uh, significant amount of products at any given one time but there are some products there right. that that yes satisfies your, your marketplace here share with us that for uh, anything that says Jamaica but in particular sour sop sour sop we right. can't get enough sour sop whoa all right and when we do get it, it's from Grenada or some other island. Um, can't get June plum. June plum, Jamaica. Oh, I have no idea when we get it again from you know another another island. Um, so June plum of sauce, that, that those two are low already. Um, ginger, Jamaican ginger, mm -mm. Jamaican like gold here. I mean, people are willing to pay premium. Unfortunately, sometimes the premium is too high. Well, people are willing to pay premium for Jamaican stuff. We, we we get a ginger from Peru, which is very small, and it reminds people of the Jamaican ginger. It sells like crazy because you know in their minds we don't we tell them you know we, we tell them it's not from Jamaica, but in their minds it's like it's from Jamaica. So they, they go ahead and buy it. Mm -hmm. So there are many low lying fruits. Um, yes, yes. We just right. need uh, the, the farmers, you know, to to get together and figure it out. And uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, you. Can, Jamaica, it's, it's, it's going to be. Gentlemen, uh, we, we have to take a break now. We're speaking with Andrew Morris, the Chief Executive Officer of Sam's Caribbean Marketplace. We are, this is the public eye. We're going to take a global break now. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Talking with, with Andrew Morris, Chief Executive Officer and Co-Founder of Sam's Caribbean Marketplace. Erwin, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm sure Sam is too. My question, you see, is there a possibility of a crossover market if we were consistent, if we had uh, uh, comparable prices, com competitive prices? Andrew Morris, what do you think? Because um, <laughs> we, we, we really want to see the, what are the upper limits of this kind of trade. I, I think there is, and um, you know it will take time as far as people getting accustomed to the our kind of fruit and our kind of you know produce. But there there absolutely is because once it says Jamaica, people are interested. People want to you know find out about it. Uh, it. Once it gets into the supermarkets like the stop and shops and so on, people test it. Um, and, and people don't mind paying a little higher price for it because it's, uh, it's, it's from Jamaica and Jamaica is this exotic um, island where, you know, everything is just nice and airy and, mm. <laughs> you know. Especially uh, the so sauces, especially the sauces, right? Sauces are something that is well, cro uh, there's a significant crossover market on. Uh, well, let, me, let, me, let me open your eye to something. It's so many areas that they have to pass through to send a mango from St. Thomas to New York. It has to clear Jamaica. It has to clear the American system in here. When it land in Kennedy, it's, it's not an easy operation. No, but I want my government, um, and I'll, I'll pay my tax for this gentleman. I want my government to hold my hand 
and walk me through that until I know the way and until other people know me. And I want my government to be so strict on me that, b b that, that if I um, put weed or any other substance inside the coffee bag or wherever, that they're going to clamp down on me right away. Yeah, and that I don't think is, 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 is a happening right now because we, uh, but, but allow me to say it, we are not, Jamaica is not serious about agriculture. No, Ronnie. Not yet. Jamaica, some of us are serious, but guess what? Yes, sir. When this serious one uh -huh. provide the thing to go to yes. Irwin and yes, New yes. York and, Sam. and somebody else put in another no, 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 agriculture. Well, we can't have it, a and they block off everybody sure, for six sure. months. We can't have a problem for every solution. Well, we, that's what happened to August 24. Yes. We have to get we have to get straight on the on this stuff and what and what 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 Andrew Morris is telling us is is the answer to our foreign exchange problem. It's the answer to our urban drift. It's the answer to a lot of the social and other problems that we have in Jamaica. You know, many you Jamaica, know. you know, many Jamaican farmers uh -huh. would take on a lot of our local men and women in Jamaica Absolutely to provide so. honey, yes. ginger, yes. mango. Yeah, what do you say? But you know, yeah. you, know, you know, gentlemen, you know, the, the, we, we go back to look at Sam's Caribbean Marketplace and, and, me, and, and, and Andrew can, can uh, articulate on this some more. It, it, it's more than just a spot where people go to get produce and stuff like that. It is also a significant spot for the dissemination of things Jamaican. Because, you see, when you consider the amount of Jamaicans outside of Jamaica, we we don't have the things that you are exposed to on a daily basis. So a Sam's Caribbean marketplace becomes a magnet. Expound on that for us a little so that the community can understand <laughs> that aspect of it, uh, uh, Andrew. Well, you know, a customer once said that um, her sister was saying that she wanted a particular product from Jamaica. And um, she told her sister to go to Sam's to get it. And her sister said, Sam's might not have it. And she said to the sister, if Sam's doesn't have it, you don't need it. <laughs> and, and, and that's kind of how it is. <laughs> that's kind of how it is for Sam. Sam. <laughs> well, that, yeah. that, 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 but what you're saying, Erwin, if I hear it, is that yeah. this, it's part of a Caribbean cultural experience to go to Sam's. Yeah, indeed. And, and you know, I, I share with you something else, too. There are, there are hundreds of Jamaicans and Caribbean nationals uh, who have gone to Sam's Caribbean marketplace uh, and have applied for their U.S. citizenship and gotten through. And, <laughs> and that's also another Whoa. service that they, they provide for the community. Well, but so I have to tell the government that there's <laughs> another consul general. And, 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 no, no. <laughs> no this, one, this, one is U, this one is U.S. This is one is U.S. citizenship. And I'm quite certain he provides information for Jamaican passports too. Well, well, that's excellent. That really is important, you know, that we should think of this. So what's the plan for the future, Andrew Morris? Uh, more of the same to, to do more of the same and do it better mm -hmm. um we we are working with um a wonderful organization that's diaspora based um called farm of jamaica farm, uh, farm the, of uh, jamaica yeah yeah mm -hmm. the founder and i are good friends um he's local here but most of the work is done in jamaica and um, Farm of Jamaica is really going out of its way to teach young Jamaicans agricul uh, organic agriculture mm -hmm. and to teach them, make them farming and so on. And so I believe that between, you know, the Ministry of Agriculture doing its part and Farm of Jamaica, organizations like Farm of Jamaica doing their part, I, I believe the future is looking a little brighter. Um, I, I know that, you know, RADA and so on, they're doing a lot of stuff to, to get things up to par as far as exports and so on but uh the, the market is there a lot can be done and so we're hopeful that um as as we try to expand you know we have a website people can order from anywhere in the world um as we try to expand the products will be there the you know the other day we got some raw peanuts from jamaica the the peanuts in a little shell mm -hmm. and i don't know if you know but the jamaica peanuts are much than the peanuts here um, the peanuts here are gigantic yeah. and very unattractive compared to the little the little seeds coming out of Jamaica, which are flavorful. Yeah. And we got a shipment of raw peanuts that were already stripped. Uh, just the red part of it uh -huh. uh, was there. And people love And when we went to order more, they said, oh, we can't <laughs> get any more. <laughs> so, so I'm, 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 going I'm, I'm going to advise you free. I went to Coronation Market last week. And the amount of 
goods that I see in the market. Uh -huh. If I were a Sam's uh -huh. and I you hire a run it to it. Oh Lord. To come yeah. into the coronation uh, uh, market. Are you or how are you? No, no, you know if, the place already. If, if I you go in there the price raise up. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, send no running, 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 send the amount of goods that you could move. Yes from coronation market into the trailer into on, the trailer onto on the plane to, to some place uh, onto Mr. Morris and exactly yeah. but remember now there are rules and regulations Pernell you yeah, mentioned exact, all them too exactly. right? yeah but all rules right? and regulations <laughs> yes, and that is where our problem is yeah but we can't let that beat us no no what I'm saying though people right. have to be educated as to what the rules are so they clearly, can better cl service clearly. the market but that is what we have a public, author and, public and, authorities and for not to depress trade but to enhance it but yes. that is a problem I can tell you that is the biggest problem that we have in Jamaica now. Pa but Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition and Pernell and myself and everybody can chat up all the good things, yes? But to get them done through people who who use their authority and their regulatory One power bogus to, man. to disable, no, not even if you're bogus, or it's a different kind of bogus, to, to disable rather than enable, yes? yes? Yeah. To disable rather than enable. That is a, a mental r r relic of slavery. Yes? Indeed, and indeed. the disability is to get for himself. Well, indeed. And well, from certain people. <laughs> Listen, as we wrap up, uh, before we wrap up with Sam, with, with, with Andrew, uh, share with our listeners, especially those in Jamaica, tell us where you're located now because I'm quite certain some relatives and friends down there in Jamaica want to tell their relatives and friends here. Uh, and we want the website address to uh, Andrew. Yes. So we're lo located in West Hempstead. It's at 225, 225 Hempstead Turnpike mm -hmm. in West Hempstead, New York. And our phone number is 516-481-6602. That's 516-481-6602. We have customer service people are actually based in Jamaica, and they answer the phone for you, even though you're calling a 516 number. They're actually answering in Jamaica. Aye. We're using the service there. <laughs> yes, Lovely. we do a service to Jamaica where uh, anyone from anywhere in the world can go on our website, Bread and Butter Express. That's Hello, Bread wait, wait, and Butter. <laughs> bread and Butter Express. Mm -hmm. My goodness, I'm writing it down. And you can order groceries for anyone anywhere in Jamaica and we'll deliver to, to their door. And it costs the person there in Jamaica nothing. The person here pays for the goods and pay for the um, pays for the delivery, and uh, people love that because you know sometimes you send the money and it doesn't get mm. used as it should. The sure. money gets Direct. you know mm. for, for doing yeah, various yeah. things. Yeah. Where now um, the grocery goes directly to the customer. Great. Well, this okay. is this is great service, and uh, th th we are indebted to you for keeping the cause of Jamaica, the flag of Jamaica, as well as the exchequer of J Jamaica, <laughs> particularly <laughs> the farming community, yes. up and running and with great prospects for the future. What an interesting and hopeful interview. And yes, Morris, sir. glad to make the acquaintance once again. Many thanks for today, Pernell. You have a uh, you have a mes messages to give, I think, to those relatives of yours who are in the farming. <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I'm a little disappointed that I spent so many times. So much. Yeah. I never uh, come. So New much York time in New York, uh -huh. driving cab, uh -huh. going uh -huh. to university. Yeah, well, that was before. And that was none, before. Of, none of come my on. colleagues before Andrew have, 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 have called her and said, how can I meet that <laughs> Pernell child? He has been our president. He has been... Right. Nobody right. called right. me I, 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 know, I, know, I, know, I don't, I don't oh. understand. I don't understand. I don't yes, understand. That has to be fixed. That and has to be fixed. Andrew Morris, Erwin Clare, blessings to you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Looking forward to next time. All right. So, gentlemen, until next week. Very good. All okay. the best to you. This All is a global connection with Erwin Clare of Irish Jam, sister station in New York, joining us on the Bridge 99 with the public eye. We'll come back after the break. We're talking things Jamaican. We're linking with Jamaicans all over the world. What an interesting discussion we just had with Andrew Morris of Sam's Enterprise in New York and Erwin Clare. This is the way forward for Jamaica. We have to grow our way. We have to eat what we grow and we have to export what Jamaicans abroad want. Yes, other areas of economy are fickle, and yes, agriculture is is in the doldrums now. Um, sugar is effectively. Out of the picture, um, bananas, well, out too, in large portion part, although I think more could be done, but providing food, you know. Um, but Pernell, before we bring in Bobby Stevens later on with, with his aspect of, 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 of vision for, for, for 2030 and beyond, when I listen to the international news, 
And here, for example, the World Bank and the IMF reducing their forecast for growth. Yes? Yeah. When we see on the television, on the monitor here, that 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 the, the the great United States may be headed towards what Mr. Biden is, is hopefully calling only a slight recession. Yes? Yeah, yeah. When we see what's happening in the United Kingdom where the pound is dropping disastrously. Yeah. These things are all going see what's happening. Go a little further. Yes. We see what's happening in Ukraine. Absolutely. And what is happening in Ukraine affects Canada, yeah. Australia, yeah, everything. The whole world. Yeah. Something yeah, as something basic as bread. We have problem. Yeah. And the recession uh -huh. is on. Mm -hmm. I was listening to your favorite station and mine, <laughs> BBC. Yeah, man. That tells us mm -hmm. what is happening around the world in developmental mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. And it is frightening. So therefore, our message has to be to the message of the bridge, I hope, um, and our partners, that look here, Jamaicans get wise. Start consider yourself. This addiction to fossil fuel, yes, can't work. This, this spending of vast amounts of money on infrastructure is good. Uh, infrastructure, it, it, the, what the World Bank says, the, the, road, the, the road to development is the development of roads. That's fine when they're supporting it, okay? But we have to grow our own food. We have to educate our people adequately for, the, for all the circumstances that we're just outlining. And we have to protect our health. Let me ask you a question, Rani. If we were talking to the Prime Minister and to his government, uh -huh. and this is PNP and JLP make up the government, right. and we said to them, look here, food is going to be a problem. You know? uh -huh. So we're going, to have, we're going to have earthquake and we're going to have hurricane. Yes, yes. We're going to have problem. <laughs> but guess this. what? Listen, yes. shouldn't government start to get into agriculture, mass agriculture? They would provide employment. They would provide proper investment, water, transportation, and sales, local and foreign. I was here when Siaga had Agro what? Agro 20, 21. Agro 21. Mm -hmm. And the small farmers started to raise cane that the big farmers were the only one putting things on planes. So, oh, no, 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 no. You plant anything mm -hmm. that the big man plant you plant it and guess what the big man say we will take all that can be exported from you uh -huh. and the rest you go to Linstead, uh, Mandeville and Kingston. Let me give you some... some what the hell is happening? Where well, are we? I, first of all, I don't think government is a very good business person. But government has a big role, which is what I think you are saying. Yes. And I was part, very close to that Agro 21 experience. Um, the, 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 ma the, the man who, who was foremost in it, Eli Tisona, who, uh, for other reasons, is, is, is in, a, in a confined place now, Yes, I, I had legal business connected with him. It was a good scheme, just what you have outlined, yes. where you got a, 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 an individual or a company, many companies perhaps, yes, who were given the proper conditions and protections by the state, assisted by the state, their responsibility, okay, but with certain clear targets. Yes, it can be distorted, that one was, but in, and there were some mistakes. Remember all this thing about hearts yes. of palm? But that didn't, the, the concept itself, whereby you were producing in quantities and qualities that included the small man. Yeah, so the small man yes. was per, to produce, yeah. the big man take what the, the small the man. The mother farm and the, and, concept. And, and, right. yeah. and they were preparing yeah, it yeah, yeah. for somebody who is going to pick it up. Sure. Clear it and, the and distribute it. Absolutely, and the now, agriculture officer. If we officer, can't go back to the Iranian wind trouble. Well, we can. This is the, this is the urgency, the impatience, and this is why I'm so grateful for your company because th there there is no. The, it, of course, the thing had problems. People subverted it, etc. But that did that can't take away from the integrity of the, the the basic idea. And the truth is that what does Jamaica have? Jamaica has land. Jamaica has people. We have to bring the two of them together in some synergistic relationship whereby there is fruitfulness and, and prosperity for, for, for all. You leave out something that Jamaica what, has. What, what, no. We have the right climate. Of course. Thank you. That we, when last have we really have yeah. a major hurricane? Well, look at it. 
Long time. What, look, and it, Yet still we close on banana because we're going to have a hurricane. Yeah. We close on this because we're going to have a hurricane. Yeah. Man, let me tell you something. If we had the proper guide uh-huh. and the proper clearance, grant you know, I am I do understand that the Americans are not going to allow food to just come into America like that Mm-mm. because something might happen. Sure, but they we might we, carry something. But we are bright, you know. Yes. We are bright, and sometimes and among our brightness, we have our generalship. Generalship. Yeah. But then, the, but but that is what we have to overcome. Now, all of these are very difficult things, but that has to be the way to go. You cannot have. You cannot have thousands of acres of arable land gone into bush. You were telling me a story about something very personal during yes. the break. Yeah. You can, we can, they can't continue that. There is no foreign money. There is no uh, uh, services money that can overtake our need, particularly given the world situation, particularly given the market opportunities that somebody like Andrew Morris has just outlined to us. And we... Uh, fail to take up those opportunities. You know what my uh, son said to or me, get stumped. And, and I have to quote him. Yes. He said, Daddy, you don't understand this thing, you know. So what happened? He said, there might be an announcement that I have to make uh-huh. that we have no rain mm-hmm. and so everything dies. Mm-hmm. Or we have too much rain I accept all that and you everything know, so. dies. Yes. But he said, that don't stop me from knowing that we may not have rain, right. and we may not have sun. Right. So we have the responsibility yes. to go to feed our yes. people because... I will excuse any failure that is caused by too much rain or too little rain, or yes. too much breeze or too little breeze. Yes, that, those are... But you cannot explain you can't, by absolutely. saying it may come. No, you, the, the malaise in the rural economy right now cannot be, expe- can, cannot be excused. And that is what we have to deal with. Yes, we have to, t- whatever small signals we can do, we need to do. The Prime Minister announced some time ago he had a backyard garden. Yes, that's good. Yes, all of us need to, but it has to go beyond that. Why is it, why is it that despite everybody's intention, you can't get agricultural credit in Jamaica, but you can buy any old care from Japan? Yeah, but may I give you... I look at thing that I am doing now that I'm not going to ask you how you come. <laughs> I'm going to bring 30 mm-hmm. seeds of okra uh-huh. to you. Uh-huh. And I want you to plant it in your yard. Yes, sir. One here, sir, 10 feet, another uh-huh. one, 20 feet. Yes, sir. Put about 10 okra seeds in your house, even if it's one room you have. Yes, sir. And watch me. Uh-huh. In a few months, you're going to be picking okra every three days. Well, I'd be happy to because it's a good food. It's very healthy. Oh, yes. And I, and I have to report to you that you gave me a, you gave me a lovely large nasberry one time, and I planted seeds, and it is growing very well. And latterly, you gave me some little miniature nasberry. look like plum, yeah. but sweet. And I planted them too and expect a good return. No, hold on. You got the, the, that one grow, the little it, one? It, I'm, I, I, it's sp- sprouting, but that is recent. But when it... If you can produce uh-huh. young Nisberry out and seize them, that is a pro- that is something that. But of course. Because guess what? Mm-hmm. People wait on birds yeah. to plant Nisberry tree, you know. But of course. I had and that experience when I. Nisberry tree, guinea tree, yeah, pimento. And, other, a piment, and even a key. Yes. I had that experience when I was a pimento farmer. And everybody told me I couldn't plant. There was no way I could, could, I could increase the number of trees because it's, it's God sent the bird to do that. Bird had to pass it out and yes, it, it yes. touch. And no, I was able to get seedlings, cultivate seedlings, and increase. We need to do that multiplying times. What has happened to the to the the the, the million three million tree tree pr- planting program the prime minister had? These are the things we need to sustain. These are the things we need to make to 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 make centerpieces of our cultural life, rather rather than than, than some of the things that we hear about. You know, something that I wrote in my book, the last book I'm writing. <laughs> that bothers me Latest. to tears. What? The lady that I saw in Moko uh-huh. with a large breadfruit tree uh-huh. loaded. Yes. And the bauxite company said they are going to mine yes. and, and they have, have to, to break it, it down. No. And they gave her $10,000 oh for that tree. Yes. I was there the day when the 955 tractor was pushing it down. Yes. 
She cried and she, said, Mr. Charles, you see all them breadfruit there? Uh-huh. Is what I can send all my pit name at school. Look at that, and $10,000 she gave. Well, but that, that is injustice. That is moral, economic sin. It's more than economic sin, because guess what happened? Mm. Whoever bring the bauxite company here, mm-hmm. whoever signed their contract, mm-hmm. tell them, yes, they should level up back the land. They never want to tell them to plant some fruit trees. No. Look they never that. want to tell them put back so, some so, aki, so, okay, put so, back some bread so, so why are we so helpless now? Because w- because if you said to me, Heroes Day coming up, come yeah. now, we all go out, it's city, 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 city seedlings here, come. Yes, instead of in, instead of some of the diversions that we make us we, we busy ourselves with and think that somebody else is responsible for our well-being. Somebody is calling us to tell us we must know what is going on. I saw it in the press mm-hmm. that the bauxite company in St. Anne mm-hmm. were going to plant some 600 trees. Good. What kind of trees are they planting? I don't know. I said to my son, you are the, you them say you are the minister of agriculture. Mm. What kind of trees? I said before you answer, go and tell them, plant some fruit trees too. But of course. Put in aki, yeah. breadfruit. Uh-huh. When, when, I, when, when I began um, in agriculture, there were nurseries I could go to all over Jamaica and get a variety of, of fruit trees. Canewood Grove place, planting garden all over the place. Now you can't do that as easily. Um, you, there are some private places, good. But w- we have to refruit Jamaica. Didn't, isn't that what Andrew Morris just said? <laughs> we, we, what Andrew didn't say, which mm. I'm going to tell you now. Yeah. How many type of aki you think we have in Jamaica? I, I don't know. Oh, you didn't know? You think it's one type of aki? No, I, I, all I know is butter aki. In my own yard, uh-huh. I have three types. Really? I have an aki that it can open mm-hmm. and stand the tree open for three or four days. Oh. It open until it turn, turn in, turn and, back up, and, all right, mm-hmm. and still good. Mm-hmm. Next one, as it bursts, you have to take it down. The one that is hard, you have to cook it. The other one, you can just throw hot water on it, and it cook. There are about probably about nine different types of aki. I'm gonna ask somebody to call in and tell me yeah. how many types of aki. Yeah. Do we have in so, Jamaica? So let us let us let let us bring point to this discussion. Or we're going to in ten minutes or so. We're going to interview Robert Bobby Stevens, president of Pragma Consultants, and a man with a dream and a hope, which takes in some of this. Let's be let's be practical. <coughs> in my view, remember that government of JLP and PNP that we are we are thinking of. Yeah. Okay. What they need to do now before Christmas is to sit down and say, "What you know?" Yeah. Um, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to concentrate on a few things where we can make an impact, yes? And w- agriculture, feeding ourselves, is going to become a major element of it. Start with the okra that can give us okra every mm. few days. Mm. Start with, with, with things that are, are nutritious. Mm. Make sh- uh, um, th- so agriculture is going to be key. Lo- let's look at the diaspora market and just challenge them how much foreign exchange they can send back, all right? Two, um, we're, we're really going to look at uh, education and to see how we can improve at the base so that the the top is is is, is does better yeah. yes we, we have we have it upside down now you know sir put uh, education to the place where we are going to beg some of them to to go look job abroad mm-hmm. yes sir can we have we have enough teachers sure sir Sure. Now that we're, we're begging them not to go, well, look, we're asking, say, yeah. we don't have enough schools. No, so you can go on. So please send yeah. some of them. Yeah, send back the money. Exactly. Yeah, just like the Cubans do. Same like nurses. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And, and uh, b- 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 let the regulations uh, encourage that rather than discourage people from, from really trying. If we, set, if we set out three or four areas of national life that we're really going to just check and go in a, in a constructive, united way, Oh my, what a, be- what, what a joy that would be. Did I hear, Ronnie, that if you try to bring back some of the senior nurses from the diaspora mm-hmm. who left here probably 10, 15, 20 years ago, mm-hmm. who have retired, mm-hmm. if we try to bring them back here to teach mm-hmm. in the nights nurses. when our schools are closed, Absolutely, because we're closing sir. school at 6 to- o'clock now, yeah, you know, yes, in sir. America, I go to school at 9 and 9.30, sure, you know. Sure, sir. You follow me? Uh-huh. If we try to bring back those yes. senior nurses sure. to say produce nurses, yes. here are the children yes, who sir. come out of school mm-hmm. at age 18, some don't pass anything. Yeah. Some pass one or two subjects, and you can't 
teach them. Yes, sir. And we can produce more nurses. Yeah. Instead of 500 a year, let's produce 5,000. Well, let me show you something. 15,000. Somebody, I said, you know, we even, even our domestic workers uh -huh. need to be taught, you know. Of course. Because Mr. Brown, who live uptown, yeah. want a domestic worker. Yeah. When he's not there and his phone ring, uh -huh. you know, I said, what well, one? Yeah. He want, hello? Yeah. This is Mr. Brown's resident. Yeah. May I help you? Yeah. Even that is teaching. Yeah. But 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 that, that sure. And there's a there's a there's a overseas market for that. Of course. My, my mother-in-law worked as a domestic in America, and that was a that she, but she had the character and she had the background that she was she she was acceptable. Yes. And and it, it, it she did well and satisfied people. There's nothing wrong with that. That honest work is honest service is good. Listen, Ronnie, I am saying to you that we know it. Mm -hmm. But I asked you the question this morning off the air. Mm -hmm. Were there some good things that we were doing a few years ago that so. we have stopped doing? Yes, and, and we, we, have, we have holy argument and holy excuse. Why, why, why we had to stop? Yes, <laughs> yes. Because there was a hurricane and the banana blew down. Sure. So we're done with banana. We're not done with, no. And, and therefore, we have to return to those roots. And make sure, and that is why, if to, just to square the, the argument, this is why I'm so concerned about the land policy. I'm not referring to St. Catherine and Mr. Holness. But now. it's island wide. Yeah, because, because but we, c we can use the, the, the concern about that incident to make a broader point. We have all this land, we don't know what we have sometimes. There are private people with lands that they are not using. We have a Land Utilization Act from 1964, yes, which we have John Giles um, and, and um, um, Robert Sons. I know the history. Never use, not use, yes, just a shell. When what, w Jamaica must use its resources in a, in a planned, adequate way. No, when, wh wh what prevents us from doing this? Rather than, 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 than a scrap out now between wholeness and golding and, their, and, and defenders and, and opponents as to w these people out there, w w how can we really look at that particular area of land and the broader segments of land? One million Jamaicans, probably well over 200 squatter settlements in Jamaica. Yes? Come, let us, let, let us try to solve that problem in, in 10 even, years. Even if we were managing the squatters, yeah. For something to produce yeah. and the rest of lands around them. Yeah. Then we'll be able to sell mango, clearly, aki, clearly. pear. Mr. Morris would get his supplies in New York. Imagine. Uh -huh. We could clear it at here and they deliver it straight to him. Uh -huh. Because I understand. Uh -huh. I remember Mr. Tiago told me once that America is coming to clear vegetables and Yes. Fruits in Jamaica. In Jamaica, pre -clearance. that when the preclearance, yeah. that when it when it land up there, straight to the it's land straight, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All that is available. Yes, but that that is what we can do. Um, um, we're not doing it. Not as not in the way that we should. No. So where <laughs> where is the initiative? What's where? the point of political power if it doesn't deliver the goods? I just don't know. just to, just to give a pretty pretty siren and and front place in the church temporarily. <laughs> Temporarily. Because I am telling you. <laughs> oh, by the way, let me announce that to, to the people, my yeah, friends, yeah. what I'm going to ask you to let's think about. <laughs> what no. It's sad. Very sad. Have you looked at what is happening to Haiti? I so. Did you know, have you thought about it, uh, that it can happen here? That's a problem. Have you thought about it, that... The guns are there. Seepage. The seepage. guns are here. Yes. The guys are there. Yes. Eight hours uh -huh. boat ride. And they have to know, say, who can go and get water? Yes. We need to set to our people. Yes. Listen, man. Yes. You're going dead anyhow. Mm -hmm. So if by, by finding some way, the government, and not only the JLP government, the government of the country has made it, the security force has made it possible for you to do so many things that nobody don't know. They have private call, they have this call, they have this call, and men are walking around in the night. You see them, you draw down your window because you're blind, you're mouth, you're deaf. You soon don't have no nose to breathe. So you, you have house, knees, but you're deaf. Yeah, but you can't see. Mouth, but you can't sure. talk. So you cannot call anybody and say, we have problems. We are heading towards 
what is happening in Haiti? You cannot go on gas station go take no gas. No, but here you me. cannot go for water. No. And therefore, we have to be very, very cautious and careful about any erosion of our rights. And also, on the other side, we have to be more and more responsible for our behavior. Now, I've been touring some schools, and I must tell you, I am pleased to see the just a cross-section, but I am pleased to see the number of parents that appear to be taking an interest in their children's education. I attended a virtual parent-teachers meeting of a large primary school uh, earlier this week, and uh, of a school of perhaps 12, 1,300, 700 plus parents logged on to, the, to, to this. This Ready, is good, you know. You, did you know that you sat right at this mic? Yes. And this radio station yes. has given you the opportunity mm -hmm. to talk to some Jamaicans. A man said to me, Why am I here? You are my situation now. <laughs> and me really, to tell you the truth, and my wife wanted to go to the school, but I'm going with her now. Yeah, oh, aye. No, that Fathers have never been going yeah, with mothers sure, to parent sure, teachers sure, meeting. Sure. And so they don't know fathers have more influence than the boys. Yeah. So when you go there and a visitor like a runner to it yeah. come and say, Look here. Here did hear my father. Mm -hmm. you, you never bow with no gold teeth in your mouth now. <laughs> you never bow with no ivory teeth in your mouth, you know. <laughs> in fact, you're a man with no teeth. teeth at all. <laughs> Oi, with this, this homespun wisdom <laughs> takes us to a break on the public eye. We'll soon be back. This is a Bridge 99 FM. Bobby Stevens, welcome. Morning. How are Actually, you? Actually, it's afternoon. It's afternoon Sorry. by now. <laughs> Good. Um, Parnell and I anxious to talk with you. Okay, great. Good. Um, Port Royal is part of the dream, part part of the dream for 2030 and beyond that you've, 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 you've been uh, incubating. Tell us what that dream is. Tell us why you, f you felt it necessary to pause after the considerable experience in public life that you have had to really envisage something for wow. our future. Wow, hello. Yeah, can you hear us? Are you hearing me? I'm hearing you. <laughs> All right. What, what has happened is that I think the whole idea of looking at a new constitution and the way we run our country is critical. The fact is we have had for too long two different tribes, JLP, PNP, and we divide our country. And what happens is that we seem to be taking one step forward and then two steps backward and we're not really totally together private sector, government, and and the various parties that are out there on a shared vision as to where we want to go with the country and what we want to do. And many of the things I've outlined are quite possible if we all just pull together, agree on the vision, and get it implemented. Like what? But a lot of what we're doing is, is fighting against each other when really and truly we should be fighting together. Well, that's what we that's why Pernell and I have come together on this program. And that's why we invited you, because we've we 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 find common cause in what you're saying. The two of us are are, are bruised um, veterans of a political system, proud of what we've been able to, to contribute if whatever it is, but recognizing that the, the traditional vessels for, that we identify as the vehicles for progress can't take us where we want to go. Where do we want to go, Bobby Stevens? What are the things that you outlined um you outlined that could we could do that we are not doing now if we made common cause you tell us well number one i think that strategically we are located 600 miles north of the panama canal and we are an obvious choice to become a logistics hub and a hub for manufacturing down the road how we had discussed it back in around about 2005 when I was at the Port Authority was that we would begin with acting as a hub for distribution of goods from mainly Far East countries in terms of their manufacturing and then down the road become manufacturers ourselves because it suits them and us because we don't have any quotas worldwide. We can basically export anything to Europe, North America, etc., without any quotas, and, and of course, Latin America. So we need to look at becoming that manufacturing hub that is going to be producing things like computers or 
any electronics you want, any sort of fridges, stoves, etc., and exporting them to the Americas as well as Europe. That's number one. Number two, we also need to recognize that our development strategy with tourism has been focused a lot on the all-inclusives. I think we need to redefine what all-inclusive means and bring in the communities, bring in the people in the communities as partners in terms of where we are going. So when we talk about developing a resort, we're not just developing one side of the street with beautiful, you know, landscaped areas and all that. But we're thinking about the communities surrounding. We're thinking about how are we going to deal with those people who are working in the hotel that come from these communities and what are their living conditions? How can we improve the infrastructure, their green facilities in the communities, etc., and look at it as a whole package? So we're not just fixing up an area for foreigners to come into and enjoy, but we're fixing up an entire community, okay? And we need to look at Mobe, uh, Falmouth, Ocho Rios, et cetera, that way. But one of the things that I wanted to do with Port Royal is to make it into an example for the rest of the world and the Caribbean in particular to follow. And this is where I think we need to be going with tourism. So that's the second one. You want me to go on with others? Yes. All right. Well. The fact is that when you look at our sports, we are world leaders in sprints, but we're not making a hell of a lot of money out of this. We need to become a hub for exciting the world to come and challenge our sprinters and also to challenge our footballers, etc. We now become a hub for putting on events that are going to attract people from Latin America, the Caribbean, as well as North America, and even Europe to come here and enjoy the football games that we have, which is bringing together people in the region, and also the sprinting and other events, the, the track and field events that we can have here. But we can continue with understated or underdeveloped facilities. In order to host these things, you have got to have a national stadium and other facilities that are catering for the visitors. And I don't think we're there yet. We need to move in that direction without any more hesitation. Mr. Let's Steve, pull that together. Mr. Stevens. Yes, tell, sir. Tell me if I'm wrong. As you were talking, it hits me right in the middle of my brain. We have millions of tourists coming to Jamaica. Right. They could be the best... Um, Serious persons. Persons to sell Jamaica. Yeah. If, we, if we were making... When a tourist come from wherever to hear, they get real Jamaican things, instead plums, of, instead of apples, guineas, this. They wouldn't even want to leave Jamaica, but when they go, they would want to want it. So they would be the best medium through which we could sell a lot of our products. Now, let us take our sport, Mr. Stevens. We produce world-class sports, but we have the Americans and the others sit in the stadium and they spot the boys, and they give them a, a scholarship, and we don't hear about them again. Because they're gone. I don't know if all of them become sportsmen. Some run with, no, some run out. they don't. But, and the fact is, um, me, the, pa, allowing them or, or training them to go abroad is what pa, is part of the enterprise. Yes, yes. But that I think Bobby's talking about. But we have only a talent that, that's sit down out here and, and <laughs> can't go nowhere. Not true, Bobby? Agreed. Agreed. And, and and because we don't have it properly managed yeah. as a In, product. No, what we have well, but what what we're doing is trying to trying to do it the wrong way by this this buying of schoolboy talent, etc., which I'm dead against. But but the, oh, you only buy it until them finish high school. Well. And which, but but you, you put something wrong in their head. Exactly. Um, but it, 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 this is interesting. You need the facilities. Um, all of these are, are, are uh, strike me as being entirely possible over a 10 or a 15 year span, Bobby, Bobby Stevens, the three that you have mentioned. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the reality is this, you know, when you look, all right, let's take another area, agriculture. I was involved in developing Brumlick back in 1981. In a matter of two years, we got up to nearly 3,000 acres of rice, but it was all mechanized. And what we did was we had small farmers who would sell us for the rice meal to be able to produce more rice for Jamaica. 
that's how we have to approach our entire agricultural development where you have like mother farms that are dealing with vegetables or whatever the whole idea that tisona had you know, back in 1970s <laughs> about yeah. doing vegetables and yeah. packaging it and uh -huh. sending it overseas was fabulous the yeah. only problem was that he was you know he was a shyster the point is though that the model needs to be replicated and it needs to have serious private sector investors pull together the funding to be able to take idle lands which were in sugar or whatever and begin to produce products that I what I call the exotics of the world. Because anything you produce in Jamaica, take ginger, take take mangoes, take any one of our products, it tastes different to the rest of the world because of all climatic conditions which allow the flavors to come out. And we don't need to use a whole heap of you know foreign in um, fertilizers. We can use things that are produced right here. Okay, I know I used to export bat guano at one stage of my life, and it was sucked up. I mean, we couldn't supply the market. The reality is that we don't have the market, uh, the product to yeah. be able to supply the market. Yeah. And one of the things that we need to look at is utilizing some of these things locally so that we can develop our agro-industry. But the more, we say is, we... the more we say these things, Bobby, the more we see it in our eyes, is the less we produce. Everybody gone in their own corner waiting on somebody to do it. We find a slick man who come and find a slick way to get it. I mean, so, so I said to my colleague here, a lot of the good things that has happened years ago in this country, not happening again. You just mentioned a few. So I want to know then what what is stopping us from from yeah. doing those things? We have well, a, we have a twenty thirty vision the that we. Uh, my my argument is right that i think we need to have a coming together of private sector government ngo and not not just government in power but government in opposition as well we need to have everybody sit down around the table and look let us say that we want this to happen by 2030 for jamaica we are all on the same page we all agree and we have the allocation of the responsibilities. One of the other things we have to get away from is this idea that the government in power must share up the spoils among its friends and family. We've got to get away from corruption and we've got to structure, for instance, the public sector boards in a way where you have members of the government, yes, but you also have members of the opposition. So if the government changes, you have continuity, but you don't have a situation where you have 15 members of the board, all selected by the minister in charge of the particular government. And they are all supporters of the PNP or the JLP. You need to have a mixture. You need to have some private sector guys in there who have no necessary link to either PNP or JLP, right? Yeah, you but, want but, to begin but, to bring a lot more um, that, that people it, from the, so, political, so that, the political ideology that governs us today. The PNP seeking to become prime minister and control, the JLP seeking to hold on and control, will not give us what you're talking about. The I'll private, the, that's why we need on. a new constitution. The private sector sit down out there and say, hold on now, we are not getting involved in them, we're not even voting, because we're going to support both of them Give them the same amount of money, and uh, anybody who win, we are in. So we are worse off because we have said, like how Ronnie and myself want education, security, and what's the other one, Ronnie? Health. And health. And and I want PNP, JLP, and private sector. No, you want that. Right? That's one gross. We can't get them. All right. It, this is why it requires us to take the opportunity when we talk about getting rid of the king and the queen, we need to talk about a totally restructured constitution, which now sets it in a way that all of these things are possible and we don't have a domination of the so-called party that win. And we have a situation where everybody can be at the table. But the idea win. that you only have, but especially when you have a situation like what exists now, 49 seats for one party and 14 for the other. It mash up everything. Because what happens is that there's arrogance, there's 
there's a whole heap of people getting things that they shouldn't be getting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It can work. When we come back from the break, Bobby <laughs> Stevens, Pernell Charles, who, who is going to lead this change? We're building a movement. Um, and it's very, very interesting that Bobby Stevens is saying things that we have canvassed. Here. I think I think yes. you told Bobby what we're doing. No, here. I didn't. And uh, uh, Ronnie could be saying the same and, word and, that and, and also <laughs> uh, aspects of, of 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 the policy and opportunity that we've been canvassing with other people in the diaspora. Yes. Even today, so how, how, how is is there is a movement developing, or is it just one or two um, desultory people saying different things? This is the public eye. We talk straight on the bridge ninety nine. Soon come. Bobby Stevens, um, Horace Horace Levy, in a, a recent book he wrote, um, says or thinks that it is civil society groups that is going to create ultimately the kind of, of, of critical mass that will um, energize and, and force change along the lines that you've, you've, you've spoken of. Do you agree? Yes, I totally agree. The fact is that I'm now associated with a group of advocates um, and, and it's called the Advocates Network. We, we, so, and, yes, good. And it's, you know, a number of individuals who are concerned about the way things are going. We feel that there needs to be a coming together of all the parties, as I've suggested, to be able to move Jamaica in a positive direction. And we are calling out and calling a number of people to the table to say, look, whether you are private sector, government, JLP, PNP, whatever, Let's all bring our minds together to find ways to make Jamaica move in a direction where we can all be proud of it. And let us set 2030 as our deadline for achieving several of these things, which I outlined in the piece that I sent to you. The fact is this, that they're all achievable. Some of them are actually on the way. You know, when you look, for instance, at the BPO business, it's growing beautifully. The fact is that that industry now needs to expand into higher elements of the BPO sector. In other words, we don't just answer telephones. And sure, but, but you have to have skills people. and education to do that. Correct. And that is why the whole education side of things has got to happen in parallel. And the education side is critical. I'll give you an example. I'm now working with my old alma mater, which is Monroe College. Yes, good. And we're looking at developing in Monroe the kind of facility that it goes back to the days when we were the premier boarding school in the Caribbean, and we served a lot of students out of Latin America, etc. We need to get back there. You know, many of the Canadian schools and the U.S. private schools have taken our position, sure. which we started from back in the 60s and 50s. Fact is, that today our facilities are not up to standard. Why? Because number one, when you look at our IT infrastructure at a school like Mono, it's just not on par with the rest of the world. So we have to bring it up. So I'm bringing to the table now a set of people who are IT experts to bring Monroe College on par with the best in the world. We're looking at a mini stadium down in Monroe that will be able to serve Southern St. Elizabeth, Southern Manchester, and even Westmoreland to be able to bring everybody together for development and training of our sportsmen and sportswomen in various sports. Oh, that's great. We have recently redone our tennis courts. You know, these are the types of things that we have to do. All of us have to go back to our roots. Our, our, where where was it that we got our knowledge? From our high schools and our prep schools. Sure. Let's build them back and bring them on world-class level. You know, one of the things that is bothering me, <clears throat> when I look back to the days of Ronnie Tweet and myself, 50 years ago, 40 years ago, that generation that you and I and many of us had, this generation don't have it. Uh, what, in terms of what? Facilities? They have more knowledge at their disposal? No, they, they have, have more the opportunity? They don't, they don't have that cooperative... Uh, Nationalist spirit? That, okay, that's a better word. Uh -huh. Because it means putting away this... PNP and JLP yeah, fighting one another. Ob obsession and, with and, 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 and tribalism. Oh, we are things. going to. Yeah. But everybody wants to be prime but, minister. But if there is a common cause, Bobby Stevens, and if there's a prospect that it can be achieved by combined effort, people will regain hope, will they? Won't they? I, I fully believe that. Let me tell you something. I'm working with some of the youngsters 
who are my daughter's age group in the 40s. And, you know, many of them kind of remove themselves from the political process. Some of them tell me, boy, you know, we don't even vote again because we're tired of the JLP, PMP foolishness. Reality is that I'm telling them, look, guys, it's your time now. You have got to take control of the country and move it forward. But it can only be done with everybody coming together, private sector, as well as public sector, as well as the people in government, JLP, PNP, et cetera. The, the churches, everybody has got to have a stake in pulling this country forward. And we all must focus on the fact that we love our country and we want to build it and we want it to be the best place for people to come and raise them picnic. That is where we really need to be going. It requires also the diaspora. The diaspora is critical, you know. A lot of people in the diaspora want to help. Problem is many of them send home money and it go into somebody's pocket and it spend off overnight. It doesn't really achieve development. What they want is some things that they can invest in. They want areas where they can feel that their dollars are properly spent for the development of the country. Yes. And I think if we provide those means, everything will move in a positive direction. I was just on a program this morning learning about crowdfunding because I think it's important that our NGOs, our organizations, I'm a part of two NGOs that raise funds out there for, for national development programs. Uh, one is Jamaica Conservation Development Trust. We manage the Blue and Jonker Mountain National Park. And the other one is the Environmental Foundation of Jamaica. Yes. We are now looking at ways that we can raise funds through debt swaps taking, for instance, debts that are owed to the United States or China or whatever, and saying to those governments, look, we know that you don't want to give us a whole heap of money to the government or whatever. Why don't you give it to this fund, which we can then use for child development and environmental projects and development projects that are going to be. We will report back to you. We will, we will give you an annual as well as quarterly sure. report on what's happening. We know the idea. But it, it, I'm oh. glad to say it's being revived. I'm glad to hear that it's being revived and may have some prospect for the future. Eh? But the, oh, absolutely. It's, it's, and, and what is happening now is that we're getting a lot of the international agencies working with us to be able to pump funds through NGOs yeah. to be able to pump Before things. we go, the, the, this movement, this coming together from various sources, different interest groups, it requires some leadership. It requires some pole around which it can cohere. Do you see that available? Yes, I see. The, the fact is, though, you're not going to have an individual leader. You're going to have people coming together and have different skills and have different leadership qualities that can galvanize entire communities and followers of them in particular or the whole group. The fact is this, going the route where is, you know, one down in charge is not the way we're going to progress. What we need to do is see that there are people out there with skills that I don't have, you don't have, that we can pull in as part of the movement, if you will. Listen, to be able I'm, to I'm, I'm still worried, Ronnie. Yeah. I'm still worried about mobilization of all of these ideas well, this is and it. the leadership of yeah, it. That's because a, this generation that I'm seeing around me now time running. is completely different from the generation that we came up with. Grant you, but the effort still has to be made and you can presage every aspect of it. Uh, Bobby Stevens, the reason why Pernell Charles and I are on the, the Bridge 99 and do this program on a Wednesday is precisely to to bring the diaspora into closer relationship with us here in Jamaica. And we're open to the Advocates Network anytime. Thanks so much for the vision. Thanks so much for the continued hard work. And please, You're invite, welcome. please Thanks invite, for having me. A please, pleasure. In, please invite us. Yes. I would like to not only hear, I'd like to see and feel yes. that that generation that has passed running, yes. that, that I'm hopeful of. Yes. Right? Well, that it, the future will be as good or better. We we live in we we live in we live in hope and uh, what I said there in Constance Spring. Thanks so much for being on the public <laughs> <high> today. <laughs> and all right, all the best. Thanks, thanks all the best. Keep up your good work, guys. Bobby I, I think you're doing a fabulous job. Thanks again for that. Thanks to Lafayne, thanks to Jeffrey, thanks to Romy and all of the Bridge 99 team for the privilege and, and of, of their assistance today. Thanks to you, Pernell. Looking forward to next time. We talk it straight on the public eye. That's the way of the Bridge 99 FM.